Thomas the Apostle has been given the name Doubting Thomas because of the episode we hear of in the Gospel today. He refuses to believe in Jesus' resurrection unless he has some tangible proof. He is reluctant to believe such an amazing event could happen because it is so far beyond what is believable. He refused to believe because he had not seen. He had not met Christ on that first Easter Sunday evening, and he had not met Christ because he was not with the others. Because he was not with them, he could not share in their experience and in the joy it brought them. He had absented himself, for whatever reason, from the company of the followers of Christ, and he had missed the boat. Only when he is with them again does he encounter the risen Jesus. His doubts are then quelled and his faith ignited. And in that moment, doubting Thomas becomes believing Thomas. He becomes the one who makes the most explicit affirmation of Jesus as God that we find in the whole New Testament when he says, My Lord and my God. The lesson for us is that when we absent ourselves from the company of believers, should we stop coming to Mass to worship with the community, when we cut ourselves off from the life of the Church, from the sacraments, we are in danger of missing out on so much. It may not seem like much is happening to us on any given Sunday, but every Sunday we are invited to meet the risen Jesus. Not Jesus standing before us, showing us his wounds, it's true, but Jesus present in a hidden way in the sacrament of the Eucharist. Jesus speaking to us in his holy word proclaimed in the readings. Jesus mysteriously but really present with us because two or three are gathered in his name. And as greatly as Thomas was blessed with the great surge of faith and grace by seeing Jesus, the Lord assures us that we who have not seen are even more blessed when we believe. And it is belief, faith, which brings us together as a worshipping community, week in and week out, Sunday after Sunday. At least it did until the COVID-19 pandemic shut the church down. Faith is lived, fueled, and really only makes sense when it is lived within the context of a community of believers. Take a blazing coal out of a burning fire, and slowly but surely, on its own, it will quickly grow dim and eventually die. Take an organ out of a living body, and quickly it too will fade away and die. And of course the whole body suffers because one of its members, one of its organs is missing. Take a Christian away from the community of believers. Take a Catholic from the Mass and slowly but surely, maybe unknown and unnoticed to himself or herself at first, faith will grow colder and may even be extinguished in that person. And that is a terrible tragedy. For the letter to the Hebrews tells us that without faith, it is impossible to please God. And the Catechism teaches regarding faith that believing in Jesus Christ and in the one who sent him for our salvation is necessary for obtaining that salvation. This past year, with such severe restrictions on accessibility to Mass and on gathering together in our churches for worship, has been so disastrous for the spiritual well-being of so many. Yes, many have turned their homes into virtual chapels, and there are perhaps many people who, during the various rolling lockdowns, have developed a better habit and pattern of daily prayer. But the inaccessibility of our masses and the absence of congregations physically and actually gathered together to praise the Lord in the highest act of worship that we can participate in, the Mass, that has overall very negatively impacted 
the faith and grace that usually courses through the veins of the body of Christ and which nourishes all her members, since the sacraments are like rivers which carry the grace and power of God from the heart of Christ into the hearts and lives of his people. Regardless of the reasoning behind it, or the rights and wrongs of it, or the supposed public health benefits of not gathering for Mass, the pandemic has spiritually harmed the whole church because the people of God were kept away from the sacraments. They were denied their highest and most direct encounter with Christ, Mass and the Eucharist. If you're listening to me right now, then chances are you have felt the burden and pain of all these restrictions on public worship. And please God, all of those restrictions will be lifted in the near future. Here in Ireland, the authorities have not acknowledged in any way that God, the Mass, the Eucharist, or the Church is essential. In their plans to reopen after each period of lockdown, they seem to always locate the importance of public worship somewhere between museums and barbers. Not that there's anything wrong with museums, nor anything wrong with barbers. But Mass is placed somewhere in there, a little bit more essential than visiting a museum, and a little bit less important than getting a haircut. And bizarrely, more or less from the beginning of the pandemic and all the way through, off-license shops have been allowed to remain open. Alcohol, beer, wines and spirits are all deemed essential items. The Holy Spirit, not so much. How far we as a nation have drifted from the faith of our forefathers, our persecuted ancestors. There is nothing more essential than Christ. And for them, it was the Mass that mattered most. And for the Mass, for the practice of their faith, they were willing to lay down their lives. And many of them did precisely that. My Lord and my God, Lord Jesus, increase our faith. Lord, give us a faith that prizes you above all others and above all other things. As St. Augustine taught, Jesus Christ is not valued at all until he is valued above all. Jesus Christ is not valued at all until he is valued above all. My Lord and my God.